Good afternoon. We are about to start our workshop. Please just wait a minute or two uh, for everyone to log on. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos. Vamos a comenzar en un par de minutos. Estamos dando oportunidad a que los participantes integren la reunión. Gracias. All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we will now begin our public meeting. Thank you for meeting with us today. I'm John Jayasinghe, the Chief of Support Services at APCD. We welcome and appreciate your feedback. Please allow me to go through the entire presentation and then there will be an opportunity to raise your hand, to provide verbal comments, or to type your comments into the chat box mm -hmm. at the bottom of your Zoom screen at the end of the presentation. Now I would like to introduce our Spanish interpreter, Frida Bloom. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Frida, and I'll be your interpreter for this session. Muy buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Frida y seré su intérprete para esta sesión. I'll give this message both in English and in Spanish. That is the mensaje tanto en inglés como en español. In order to provide language access, this meeting will have simultaneous bidirectional interpretation into English and Spanish. If you're bilingual, you don't have to click anything. But if you're not bilingual and you're on your laptop, please locate the icon shaped like a globe at the bottom of your screen, click on language interpretation, and then select English. If you're on your phone or an iPad or a similar device, then locate the three dot menu in the upper right corner of your screen, click on language interpretation, and then select English. When you speak, do so at a moderate pace because the interpreter is going to be simultaneously interpreting everything you say. A efecto de proporcionar acceso lingüístico, esta reunión contará con interpretación simultánea bidireccional al inglés y al español. Si usted es bilingüe, no tiene que presionar nada. Pero si usted no es bilingüe en inglés y en español y está en su computadora, en este momento localice un icono en forma de globo que está en la parte inferior de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione español o Spanish. Si usted es en su iPad o en su teléfono, entonces localice el menú de tres puntos o que dice More en una de las esquinas de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione español o Spanish. Cuando hable, hágalo en español. El intérprete estará simultáneamente interpretando todo lo que usted diga. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. I'm, jo I'm joined today by Deputy Directors Michael Watt, Mahini Luther, Domingo Vigil, and our Division Chiefs, Mosa Nazemi, David Sodeman, and William Jacks. The APCD recently completed a cost recovery analysis including a review of the district's current services, costs, and revenues to determine the annual deficit. On May 21st, 2021, 
the governing board adopted a cost recovery plan to begin to achieve full cost recovery between the next three to five years per the completed analysis and study. And these fees are incorporated into the proposed changes to rule 40 and 42. By the end of our presentation, we hope you'll better understand the nature of program costs, how costs and fees are determined and efforts to improve customer service and contain district costs. Here's an overview of the agenda items for today. A background about federal and state mandates, the governing board adopted plan and policy directions, a summary of the cost recovery analysis and results, and an overview of the services provided, including prior and future efficiencies, and a summary for our next steps. The APCD is mandated by federal and state law to control stationary sources of air pollution in order to provide progress toward attaining and maintaining federal and state clean air standards. These mandates are designed to ensure the protection of air quality and public health. Accordingly, the district work, works with sources to ensure they operate in a manner that meets applicable requirements and protects air quality and public health. Failure to comply with these air quality mandates would not only be detrimental to public health, but it could also lead to the withholding of federal transportation funding to the region as authorized by federal law. Federal law requires the APCD to collect and update fees to fully fund the federal Title V permit program under the Clean Air Act. Additionally, federal, federal law requires a maintenance of effort, which means the APCD's expenditures of non-federal funds may not be less than in the previous year. The district must maintain its efforts. State law directs the APCD to set fees to recover the costs of issuing and renewing air quality permits for stationary sources. Additionally, per the California Health and Safety Code, the district has the ability to increase individual fees for services to permit, to operate, and authority to construct permits, as long as the total revenue for those fee categories does not exceed 15% in a single fiscal year. The district is also required to annually review all fees to ensure they are aligned with costs and to make recommendations to the board for any changes. In May of 2021, the San Diego Air Pollution Control District Governing Board focused on four main areas. Cost recovery background and histor historical information was reviewed, achieving full cost recovery as soon as feasible, fiscal year 2021-22 revenue and cost recovery projected impacts, and fiscal year 2021-22 revenue and cost recovery monitoring to help inform future policy decisions. The district has not increased fees in over two years, and the last permit fee updates were in 2019, 2018, and 2017. The district did not increase fees for five consecutive years, from 2012 to 2016. In May 2020-21, the APCD Governing Board adopted the cost recovery plan. As you can see on this slide, the plan applies a 15% aggregate cap increase to applications, renewals, source testing, time and materials, and administrative processing fees. It applies a 25% increase for asbestos and hearing board fees. This will increase the district's overall cost recovery percentage from the current 66% to 78% therefore reducing the current deficit from 34% to 22%. The APCD Governing Board Adopted Cost Recovery Plan will set the district in motion to reach full cost recovery between the next three to five years. The cost recovery analysis reviewed district's current fees for services. The analysis ensured compliance with Proposition 218 and 26 and California Health and Safety Codes. Proposition 218 and 26 
adopted by the California voters in 1996 and 2010, limit government fees to only the indirect and direct costs of the services for which the fee is charged. The full cost of services was calculated to determine the district's annual deficit. This slide shows how the district determined the total cost for its services. Total cost is calculated by taking the time spent for each fee activity to determine the direct cost for the productive hours of salaries and benefits, then adding the divisional overhead plus the district-wide overhead. An example of divisional overhead are supplies, and an example of district-wide overhead are information technology costs. When comparing fiscal year 2020-21 fee-related costs with fee-related revenue, the district is under recovering its costs by approximately 4 million. Currently, the lowest cost recovery percentage is 46% for source testing fee category. Overall, cost recovery percentage for all fee categories is 66%. As you can see here, this is a summary of the cost recovery percentage for certain other air districts within the state of California, based on the most recent cost recovery data available at this time. Many air districts have a policy in place to maintain a 100% cost recovery based on their most recent cost recovery analysis. This plan will result in additional revenues up to 1.4 million per fiscal year and will reduce annual ref revenue deficits from 4 million to 2.6 million. Services provided. Engineering evaluates approximately 400 applications annually and a total of 7,100 APC permits in San Diego County. Engineering quantifies emissions and determines significant sources of air pollutants. Source testing performs the district required emissions source testing for permits application and permits to operate requirements. In source testing ensures third party contractors conduct emission testing in accordance to approved test methods. Compliance inspects all regulated facilities to ensure compliance with air pollution rules and regulations. Compliance also responds to air quality complaints and takes enforcement action when there's a documented violation. The district continuously reviews processes to improve efficiencies and to ensure fee revenues are used as efficiently as possible. Engineering has, has implemented an online customer emissions inventory system, added health risk assessments processes, made available public open data for permits and actual and potential emissions implemented a public document, document library consisting of applications, health risk assessments, emissions inventory, risk reduction plans. Source testing has streamlined report review and writing processes, implemented efficiencies and reduced staff time in the equivalent of one budgeted FTE. Compliance re-engineered complaint processes and developed a new mobile complaint application. Compliance expanded and enhanced electronic inspection forms, made available public open data sets for complaints and settled enforcement cases, and has a public document library with violations and enforcement documents. In closing, the Air Pollution Control District is committed to continuous improvement, which includes recovering costs for services provided. As part of this effort, the district has implemented efficiencies and operations that have helped the district contain costs in a number of areas. However, an increase fee in fees is still needed to, be to attain full cost recovery. The cost recovery proposal is designed to provide full and equitable cost recovery across district programs. It will, sure, it will ensure compliance with federal and state mandates and district policies. It will help sustain the air quality program and maintain clean air standards. It enables the district team to continue supporting industry operations in a manner that protects air quality and public health and better control emissions from stationary sources. 
It will result in improving the services provided by the district to the community. The district is scheduled to present the proposed plan to the Air Pollution Control Governing Board on October 14th as the first hearing and planning to schedule the second hearing. Please note the second hearing date is still to be determined by the Governing Board along with the implementation date. This concludes the presentation and the district staff, including Deputy Directors Michael Watt, Mahaini Luther, Domingo Vigil, and our Division Chiefs, myself, John Jayasinga, Mosin Nazemi, David Sodeman, and William Jacks, are available and happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Okay, we have turned on the chat. So if you'd like to type in a message, please feel free to do so, or please raise your hand and we will call on you. Okay, we do have um, someone that raised their hand. Please, there you go, you can, you can ask your question. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was just typing it into the chat text, so um, uh, this would make it easier if I can talk. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Sassan Rahimzad. I'm actually a local dry cleaner here in the uh, city of Chula Vista, um, but I, I'm also uh, president of the California Cleaners Association, and frankly, we represent over uh, 300 different dry cleaners uh, members um, within the state, and um, as an industry, we're obviously, frankly, a very uh, you know small business. Uh, represent ninety five percent of the industry is made of mom and pop shops, and frankly, during COVID, um, as an industry, we got hit extremely hard. Um, mostly because work at home is not conducive, frankly, for for dry cleaning purposes or or anything else. Um, um, all the other events have been um, have hit us quite hard as well, and. Um, one of the uh, the biggest issues is, frankly, is um, AB 998 is coming down the pipeline as well for us through the Resources Board, which mandates the the uh, changing out of uh, quite a few uh, uh, dry cleaning operations. There isn't too many of them left, um, uh, frankly, but uh, um, there still are um, um, some left, and the fees, to be honest with you, at this point are, are just kind of, to be honest with you, it, it's just adding uh, insult to injury or, or, or salt to the wound, so to speak, if uh, uh, you call it as such. Is there, again, because not all industries, I, I, I certainly understand um, the need for, um, for uh, Regulations. I, I I can tell you frankly, uh, as a dry cleaner myself, we get we get uh, inspected um, annually, um, and I, I'm actually rather relieved by the fact that we do have you folks come by and tell us exactly what the proper way to, you know, whether we're, we're meeting the standards that we need to be. Because if there's anybody's health and well-being, I'm mostly concerned about it's my own, my staff, my family, um, and then of course the greater community as well. I, um, so believe me, uh, no one wants to to have those guidelines there more than I. However, uh, you know, making sure that environmental sustainability can also be combined with economic sustainability for all parties involved, in, in, including the very very smallest of businesses, the smallest mom and pop neighborhood businesses, who also get uh, uh, frankly affected by all these changes. Um, at a point, especially especially right now, um, with everything that's happened to to us as small business owners in um, uh, you know post COVID or frankly during COVID, so I just wanted to see if 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 the board has any kind of uh, um, has considered those those effects and and looked into those things to see how this could impact. A tremendous number of smaller of businesses um, going forward. I understand just as the, the you know the district has um, 
economic needs that it's putting into into place. Uh, but frankly, I'll be honest with you. I think the small businesses we're we're at dire straits. We are, you know, during the the first few months of COVID, we were down eighty to eighty five percent in 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 business volumes, and we still have not come even close to recovering anything near those. And um, so. Uh, anyways, I, I would appreciate it if, if those issues can be taken into consideration. Thank you. Great, thank you for your comment. All right, do we have any more comments in the chat or um, someone raising their hand? I don't see anyone typing a comment. I don't see any other raised hands right now. Give everyone another minute or so to either type in a comment in the chat box or to raise your hand. Again, the hand uh, raise to raise it is in the bottom of your screen. Just give, oh, there's a message. Okay, I have a message from Frank Williamson. Does the APCD anticipate additional 15% increases being proposed during 2022 and 2023? John? The district, um, the the plan for cost recovery will require the district to to increase fees you know each year in order to, in order to get up to to 100% but the board is only acting each each year you know so this is just the the first um you know fee increase so the board will make a separate decision each each and every year so there's no um there's no plan that's been adopted that said that they will do that, but that that will be required in order to get to cost recovery. Thank you, John. We'll wait to see if there's any other questions or if anyone has their hand raised to ask a question. Maybe another 30 seconds to type or to raise your hand. Okay, here's a question. Will there be any additional hearings about this topic? Yes, so there'll, there'll be, um, th there's two hearings and there'll be a hearing in October, October 14th, and then there'll be a second hearing in November still to be determined. So there will be two more hearings. Okay, I did receive an additional, um, okay, I guess there's two, I'm sorry, there's a few more comments. One is, will comments be taken after today?
So at the hearing, it'll be a public meeting. So the, there will be comments there. Um, and that'll, that'll be the opportunity to for the board to receive additional you know, public comments. Okay, thank you, John. Another question uh, from Frank Williamson. Per your statement, does that mean ultimate goal is 100% cost recovery? The short, shortfall now is 4 million. Yes, the, the goal is to get to full cost recovery. Um, and that's, you know, per, per our, our policies, per um, state health and safety code um, to, to cover the cost. And it is, a, it is a policy decision by the board to be made, you know, each year on, on you know, what the increase is and such like that. Um, and, you know, that, that, that will be, be done each year. The right now the district is um, using um, other revenue sources to to supplant that cost and not recouping the cost for the permit program, and that uh, does not allow the district to use those other revenue sources for um, incentives and other pollution reduction activities. Okay, thank you, John. There's another question. Are there any other cost cutting activities to achieve financial stability versus transfer fee to end users? Yes, um, I mean, the district, the district is consistently doing that each year with its budget process and with, with, um, with process improvement. I mentioned, you know, just a few of those with, with each of the um, divisions that works on, on um, the, different, the different areas, the different programs. And so the district's always working, to, working on efficiencies and things like that. And I mentioned some of those, some of those specific ones on that slide, and we continue to do that. And then through the budget process, we're we're also, um, you know, trying to trying to achieve efficiency where where we can. Okay. Another question: How is the current deficit being funded? Right. So the current deficit is being funded with with um, vehicle fees. Um, that's what's funding the the, the deficit, and that that takes away from the from from the district from being able the board and and the district from being able to use those fees for um, projects that would that would reduce um, air pollution and, and bring air pollution to um, uh, maintain and, and try to bring air pollution to better standards. Okay, thank you, John. There's also a comment from Domingo. It says he is our uh, deputy director. Comments can also be submitted electronically once the agenda for the board meeting is posted. And he provided a copy um, of our uh, clerk of the board agendas. Also, we will be accepting uh, written comments to, within the next um, two weeks. And if we, if John, could you please type your email into the chat box so everyone um, can have it in case they don't already? And comments can be directed uh, to John. Yes. So that's a general, um, a general uh, email box that we're monitoring that that uh, folks can submit any uh, any stakeholder can can submit a submit a question and we'll field that for y'all. 
Okay, thank you, John. So two weeks, so let's say end of business on Tuesday, September 14th, if anybody would like to submit some additional comments to the email address that John provided, apcdfiscal at sdcounty.ca.gov. And you can also submit comments in the language of your choice. Okay, please. Um, you know, either raise your hand or type additional comments. Puede hacer comentarios en el idioma de su preferencia también. I do see a hand raised, Lori. Uh, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Can the district come up with a proposed list of the projects that they plan to use the surplus money for? Um, and how is that, how is that, are those funds going to be allocated? Is there gonna be additional public comments, um, review, process and prioritization of those projects. So th that would be, it'll be done through the board. It'll absolutely be uh, public and made available. It'll be part of the, it would be part of the budget process um, as to where, where the additional revenue would go. And it'd be, it'd be treated the, the same as, as any of the other the other revenues um, right now for the sources. There isn't like an existing list or anything, but 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 that would be you know a board decision and re recommended by the air pollution control officer and for the board to decide. So I guess I should have made my comment that that a proposed list should be established um, and developed and and a, a, some type of a protocol as to how. Uh, that those surplus fundings, I mean, I think it's a million dollars or something like that are going to be funded and who's going to get that money and how how it's all going to go. You guys are going to get a windfall. We, we need to establish some parameters on how that windfall is going to be used to better and protect the air quality in San Diego. For sure. And it will be transparent. So, OK, that, thank you for the comment. And we'll make sure the board the board has that. Okay, there's another uh, comment. Can this recording be watched at a later time on the YouTube channel? And yes, it is. We are live streaming now. And if you go to our YouTube channel, you will be able to watch it uh, in the future. Okay, I'm looking for any other um, hands raised for people to ask questions or, okay, there is, uh, I don't see any more comments being typed or hands raised. Okay, the comment from Domingo. The focus for the fee package is cost recovery since we are operating at a deficit. Okay, a comment from Frank. California State Audit stated that 12.6 million was raised for district via vehicle license fees. That came from a $4 fee per registration. I am told that $4 is the maximum county is allowed to charge. State law allows vehicle license fees to be up to $6. Can you speak to the difference?
You know, I can't, I can't, um, but I will, we will look into that and, 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 and answer that and provide that information to the board. Um, we'll have, we'll, we'll analyze that and um, I appreciate the information and we'll make sure that we have council look into the legal part of it and um, we'll present that, that information to the board and answer that. Okay, thank you, John. And Domingo um, has the same comment he had in Spanish. Oh, I'm sorry, Paula has a comment. Proposition 26 limits our ability to raise the vehicle license fees, and we would not be able to raise that fee without a county-wide vote. Okay, any other comments or, oh, one hand raised. Okay, Lori, please unmute yourself. So Domingo, my, my reference to a windfall is probably not the right terminology, but the $4 that you're getting from the DMV funds that have been making yourself whole, you're now gonna have. So by increasing our fees, you're, you're, you are getting more money into the coffers of the APCD. And it's those extra, that extra money by the 15% and what is going to be occurring over the next three to five years to make sure that you're 100% cost recovery to get that $4 per, per vehicle mileage. That's my, that's my ask is what is that money going to be spent on? What, what is the plan and the, digi- the district needs to have a vision as to how those, how those funds are gonna be spent. Hi, Lori, thank you. Yes, and, and we, we actually will be uh, taking a look at that as part of our, um, of our budget process so that it's part of an open and transparent process where members of the public as well as the board uh, will give us uh, input and ultimately the board will decide how these funds uh, will be expended. Okay, and, and, and that's fine. I know the rule hasn't been approved and you don't have the funds, but I just want you to have line of vision as to ultimately you're gonna get these funds and how what's the process gonna work and something needs to be proposed to the board or the board needs to resolve it, but it just can't be a free for all. That's that. That's my only. I mean, we all want cleaner air. We all want great projects and to do good things for San Diego. There's no no qualms or questions about that. But we need to make sure we're spending our money money wisely, and that there's some process to that of spending, however many millions of dollars that is potentially going to be available. Absolutely. Thank you, Lori. And we certainly welcome your input and comments if you have any ideas. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Okay. Do we have um, anyone else raising their hand to ask a question? or typing a question in the chat box. Well, there is a question. You may ask your question, Sasan. Okay, hi, this is Sasan again. I guess I'm, I was just wondering if there was any to my prior comments, was there any kind of a, a response or anything like that to that comment, uh, or is uh, or is this set in stone at this point? And um, it's it's frankly there's there couldn't be any more consideration for different industries that that uh, are simply at dire straits given the current economic trends.
Hi, um, this is Mayani Luther. Uh, I'm one of the deputy directors for the district. I would like to address this question. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sassan, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, yes, that's close enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. I also have a very unique name. So I know, I know, I, I know what you got through. So. I want to make sure I no pronounce worries. your name correctly. So thank you for your comment. Uh, we really appreciate. Uh, first off, we understand that, you know, uh, businesses have been impacted in different ways during this past uh, year, year and a half. Um, so we understand where you're coming from, and we're certainly going to take your comment into consideration um, and, and, and evaluate some options. You know, we are, um, you know, as, as John previously explained, you know, we, we are really required to recover costs, but, um, and that's the effort that, um, you know, this proposal essentially includes a plan, you know, for us to, to, to do exactly that, to recover our costs, but we also understand, and we are very sensitive to how, you know, these fees can impact businesses. So we're gonna take your comments into consideration and you know evaluate any options another thing that i wanted to mention is that a workshop report will be provided uh you know uh, formally answering all the questions that we received today uh and this is part of our rulemaking process and so you we will you will have you know all these questions answered in writing uh and as angela previously mentioned we will still will continue to receive comments within the next two weeks um in addition to that, there will be two public hearings, um, you know, we're, when we're going to be presenting this proposal to our board. Uh, the hearings are going to be uh, on October 14th. And uh, team, can you please remind me of the date, please, of the hearing for this? At, at, you know, as it stands, I know it's going to be the first hearing is going to be October uh, 14th. And when was the second hearing again? The second hearing board is still to be determined by the board. So the board, when the, the board will set their, their, their calendar, their schedule. Okay. So they'll probably do that in October. So we'll know in October. Okay, that, that's good. So yeah, the first hearing will be on October uh, 14th and it's a public hearing. So uh, <clears throat> members of the public and the regulated community is gonna have an opportunity to address our board of doing that hearing. Um, I believe our, uh, the link to our website where the agendas are published uh, has been provided on the chat and we're also going to be providing this information um, under the workshop report. Well, yeah, it, the one thing, Sasan, is that it, it does have to be 30 days after the 14th, so so it'll at least be 30 days from the 14th. We're just, we just have to just, you know, work the schedule out with the board and have them have them adopt that. And I just sure. wanted to add to, to Miney's comments because we're, we're absolutely um, you know, sensitive to um, the business, and so is the board, a hundred percent. I do want to just um, let you know that the the previous board did defer um, the the fees and the due date for fees um, two times, and so there are that you know those type of options will be provided to the board as well, and then we have. Um, during the pandemic, we have um, waived uh, late fees for any um, for any um, you know stakeholders, customers, clients that have had uh, late fees be incurred um, and have a you know hardship related related to the pandemic. So I just wanted to let you know that um, you know there are options like that that will be uh that that are be brought to the board and 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 are available to the board and so sure. I, I i really appreciate that and honestly i'll make sure that i can take some of this information to our um you know for our association's uh membership as well to let them know um uh, but like i said uh, any of those considerations especially you know certain obviously i, I know you, th there's so many different types of industries and some hit uh, harder than others, and some uh, are in much more dire straits. And that was the, uh, the one uh, issue that I wanted to bring up in 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 going forward. And hopefully, if I get the opportunity to to speak at the board meeting itself, maybe I don't I don't know if if we're kind of too late to the game at this stage or not. Uh, but hopefully, they can take that things into consideration because you know, kind of these widespread sweeping uh, uh, rules 
uh, can sometimes inadvertently uh, uh, affect uh, folks that we're actually at the same time trying to protect uh, nonetheless. Um, so we would appreciate those considerations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, please um, raise your hand if you have any additional questions or please type your question into the chat box. Again, please raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question or uh, type your question into the chat box. Okay, there's an additional question. The 15% is reflecting what amount in particular? John? Yes, um, let me see if I can make sure I understand. Um, it the the fees for the for the four categories that I went over on that slide, those are all increasing by fifteen percent. Um, what amount? I mean, e each fee in those categories is increasing by fifteen percent. does that does that answer your question? or maybe you ask it a different way or something. Okay, thank it you. It does, thank you. Again, if you have a question, please raise your hand and I will unmute you or you may type your question in the chat box. I don't see any other hands raised. Questions being typed. Oh, one more. Is the APCD considering raising the per ton emissions fee in future years? It presently is $116 per ton. Miney, do you want do you want me to to start with that, or do you want to go ahead, John? So um, the the per ton emissions fee is is going to be looked at um, in our next um, round of of fee analysis. So um, I can't answer, you know, whether it's going to be raised, but but we are going to look at that particular fee, and 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 how it's based, and um, the specific cost recovery and deficit for that, and how it's actually structured as well. So we're going to actually specifically um, analyze that fee. I can't say whether it'll go up or, but uh, it will be analyzed and and um, potentially change the way that it that it works now. Okay, thank you, Frank, for your question. Again, if you'd like to speak and ask a question, please raise your hand, or you may type it into the chat box.
I don't see any more hands raised. I don't see any more questions in the chat. Um, if there's nothing else, John, would you like to um, close out the meeting? Sure. I just want to thank everybody for your time. And really, you know, this is uh, the beginning of our process where, you know, we'll have our hearing. Um, like Mayani said, we will have a uh, report um that will that will go to the board and we'll we'll make sure that these all these questions are are vetted out and we'll have our hearing definitely october 14th and like i said 30 days after that uh to be determined um will be our our second hearing and you can email any any questions uh over the next 14 days to that to that apcd fiscal so thank you so much thank you very very much and um, I'll just end by saying clean air for all. Great, thank you everyone.